it's here and it's massive. <laughs> so let's get started with uh, unpackaging this beast. I want to make sure that I do everything correctly. So I just logged into my Glowforge app and now I'm going through the instructions so that I make sure I do everything right. So I'm just going to take this and show the condition of the box. Turn this around just so if there's any issues, I can show Glowforge what happened. The box itself is pretty beat up, but hopefully it'll be okay. From what I've seen, it's got pretty good packaging. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start by, well, moving this accessory box off to the side and using the scissors to cut these straps. A lot of the packaging uh, Glowforge recommends that you keep in case you ever need to send anything back, but these straps are one bit that I can throw away. I'm taking these little uh, edge guards off, wrapping the tape around because it was hanging off. Go ahead and get those stacked up. So far, this is pretty easy. Um, honestly, they, they have a really uh, straightforward way of going about um, their packaging, and it seems pretty sturdy. The next bit was these little clip here, clips here. So you open it on one side, and then on the inner part, you kind of just pull them out carefully. This is one part that you definitely need to keep in case you ever need to send it back. Um, also, it kind of holds the box together, so that's super cool. So I got all four of these little clips taken off and then I collected them and I actually got uh, like a gallon size Ziploc bag um, to keep all of these little accessories in. Um, so that's where those will go. Next up we are removing the top of the box. This took a little bit of wiggling. Almost. There it goes. Oh my goodness, this thing was huge. And we can start taking some of the things out. So there's a whole bunch of really nice foam on top of this to protect it. Went ahead and removed those. And this is when I realized um, this was going to require my husband. So I went ahead and got him. We opened up the plastic part. They recommend keeping that intact so you don't want to cut it or anything. You just kind of unfold it and carefully lift the Glowforge out and put it into its new home. And went ahead and jumped forward here to uh, get all this packaging out of the way and relocate our camera. So here I just took the tape off the front and I'll go ahead and open that lid for the first time and carefully remove these little foam pads. Went ahead and put the little gate down, make that a little easier to get out. And there it is. Okay, Midas checking out the new contraption. Go ahead and move you down this way so that you can see a little bit better. Don't mind my crazy camera work. I'm new to this. Uh, disclaimer, I did a couple of these out of order, but um, I did cover all of the steps. So this clip was actually supposed to be removed later, but uh, I got it, got it done. Um, also, this little screw thing, I was supposed to do both sides. Again, I did it out of order. Don't follow exactly what I did. Follow the instructions. Um, but I got everything taken care of. So this is just me uh, taking out all of the little extra things. <clears throat> that back piece of foam is where uh, the actual laser lens is housed, so I got that first little layer off. It came with a little tool and a lens wipe uh, to keep the lenses clean, and then there is that lens housing there. Uh, the recommendation is that you don't touch anything that is not that matte black, um, just so you don't get fingerprints or oils on there. So I went ahead and took that out of the housing or the, the foam housing and uh, put it on the side as I took out that last bit of foam. I like how they have it cut so it's really easy to pull out. Again, I should have already put that little orange piece um, 
uh, out earlier, but uh, here is me taking the tape off of that middle bit, being so, so careful not to rip that white ribbon. That is the wiring that kind of moves the printer side to side. There it is. I'm finally getting that piece out. There we go. Okay. So I've got that little orange piece out now, and the next step is going to be actually pushing the set back a little bit so that I can pull out these little orange um, silicone pieces that kind of keep it in place. Man, this machine is beautiful. Okay, taking a look at my instructions, making sure I got everything out of there that I was supposed to. And this little piece here is something that I could have taken out right now if I was planning to use the pass-through slot. I do have the Pro model, so it has that as an option um, that would pass longer pieces of material all the way through the machine. Um, for now, since I don't have a ton of space, I'm going to go ahead and keep those pieces on. So I will wait until another time to remove those. This is me putting the crumb tray in. So this is what kind of elevates the material so that it's in focus of the lens and also kind of catches any crumbs, so to speak, um, as materials are being cut. got some little divots underneath it that kind of show you when it all is all the way in place which is great got the little door put back up and next up is putting in that lens house uh, the lens case I guess I'm not really sure what to call it anyway here's the lens and camera and laser all that fun stuff and the next step is going to be using that little piece that sticks out is where the ribbon is going to actually click into place for. Um, so I'm just getting it turned the way that I need it to be. And then I will attach that little white ribbon there. And the way that you know that the white ribbon is in the right place, you can actually see exactly where it attaches to. And it's going to click. And that's when you know that it is attached right. Um, so the way that you want it is with that Glowforge symbol all the way up top. That clicks into place and then I'm going to carefully place that right up against the little rolly things and there's a magnet that actually sticks the laser head right into place. So that's perfect. Uh, the next bit asked me to make sure that it is able to move smoothly across in both directions. So this is me carefully moving the laser head. Uh, from side to side and then bringing it back over to the center next and next up we're ready to hook up the ventilation and the power cord but while we're getting ready let me tell you a little thing about internet now that was the hardest bit for me um, I had some connectivity issues um, I use Xfinity and so because of that um, I had to do quite a few changes in my setup to make sure that I had the right internet connection. Um, it requires the 2.4 gigahertz connection rather than the 5.0, um, and my internet was set up to run both uh, as needed. So um, that's one thing to consider is you do need to be able to make those changes. Um, but of course, before I do the internet portion, we are hooking up the ventilation here. So I've got the ventilation hose. It's going to connect from the back of the machine out to my window. Uh, it's a little hard to see in this video, but that little black piece down on the window is actually a sliding uh, mechanism that allows me to open and close um, the vent when I am not using the machine. So I can close it back up so that I don't get cold air coming into the machine or any you know, bugs or things like that uh, coming in. So that's a really cool thing. However, because it opens and closes, um, there is a little bit of a safety measure that needs to be considered, um, which I found.
found out the hard way my first time running with the machine, you absolutely need to make sure that your ventilation is ready to go. Um, because if you don't, uh, and you don't have that vent open, um, it can lead to smoke. No good. All right, the last step before it is ready to hook up to the Wi-Fi and use is that power cord. So I've got it hooked up to my wall. I'm plugging it into the back. And right when that is plugged in, we will turn it on. Here we go. There it is. So I got it all set up and now I'm ready to do my first print. I'm going to go with the recommended first print, which is the gift of good measure. So we'll go ahead and get started. So I mentioned in my voiceover that, um, when I did my first actual cut, which was the, um, gift of good measure, uh, I made a mistake. I did not, um, open my ventilation hose uh, housing properly and so it led to some smoke coming in the room kind of freaked us out a little bit um, so I don't I do not have that recording uh, but this is what I made so this was the very first project that it asked me to make um, it's a little ruler and has like the diameters uh, measured out and it's meant to be just like a keychain so that you always have that measurement so super super cool I love the detail I love being able to see all of the different things that the Glowforge can do um, but let's take a look at my first um, project that went as planned okay so I've got the Glowforge all set up I've done a little test run with its initial first project uh, making this super cool little ruler thing and now I'm gonna start with uh, my first slightly customized project so let's take a look Yeah. Here it is, my first little project. Um, so this one was slightly customized. The snap box was a plan from Glowforge. I added my logo to the bottom, as well as the little heart and sunflower. I love the little lid that sits on top there. Um, just a super cool, simple snap box. So excited. So there you have it. You have the unboxing of my Glowforge and my first couple of projects. And I just have to say, I am so thrilled with um, my purchase. Like I know that I've just barely scratched the surface of what this thing can do. Um, I made a third project last night that I will show later on, but it's a gift for somebody, so I don't want them to see it early. Um, but I will let you guys see that uh, pretty soon, but I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Uh, definitely going to be keeping this machine busy. Um, if this is something that you also find cool that you think might be something for you, um, I actually do have a referral code. Uh, the referral code program for Glowforge is super cool because it actually allows um, both you and I to get a little uh, benefit from it. Uh, that being, if you were to get the pro model like I have, uh, you can get up to $500 off of your order. And if you were to do that as well with my code, I would also get $500 um, to put toward my machine or toward materials. Um, I think the lowest is 
250 something like that but you can get as much as 500 depending on the type of machine you get I got the pro model like I said if you look right here this little line here is a pass-through slot that is one of the top benefits of getting the pro model is you can do longer materials um, but the basic and the plus models also do everything that you saw today you can do with the, the plus and basic models as well um, one other benefit to the pro is that it's um, quite a bit faster it is a stronger laser um, and so that is one of the other benefits to having the pro but all of the models are really great I've seen great reviews across the board from my research that I did before I bought this um, but I went ahead and went with the pro model because you know it is a, a bit more expensive but if you're gonna pay the money for you know a really cool laser uh, why not go ahead and just get the top tier um, so yeah, I hope that you enjoyed my unboxing and getting started video. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Have a great day.